Attention, artists. Are you tired of being told to use references, but not sure how to do it right? Do you feel like you're just copying the reference instead of actually learning from it? Well, it's time to change that. In this week's YouTube art school class, we're going to go over the proper way to draw from reference and how it can have a huge impact on your artistic progress when done right. Grab your pencils and let's get started. I'll show you. Oh, class is starting quickly. All right, class is in session. Pay attention before you pay the class fee of either one like or one sub. Now, depending on your skill level, your approach to drawing from reference should change and evolve over time, just like when learning anything. So I'll show you the right way to approach drawing from reference, depending if you're a complete beginner, a more intermediate artist, or someone with more experience. Just scroll to the chapter in a timeline that best fits your current skill level, and let's get learning. You got this. And if you're a beginner, you're up. As a beginner artist, it's important to focus on building your foundation of skills and learning the basics of drawing. When drawing from reference, you'll want to start with simple subjects that have clearly defined shapes and forms, like boxes, cylinders, spheres, and any kind of reference that might look like those simple volumes. You can, of course, try your hand at gesture drawing if you feel like that's too easy. In this case, you'll want to use simple, idle poses, preferably seen from the front or the back, but, you know, without any kind of perspective. The simpler, the less dynamic the pose is, the better. This will help you practice your observation skills and get familiar with correct proportions, which is by far the most important thing to focus on initially while getting a feel for drawing from reference. Before actually starting to draw though, spend a solid two to three minutes really observing the subject, getting familiar with the shapes, looking at relationships between the length of different sections and things like the shape the negative spaces create or the overall shape of the subject if it were just a simple silhouette. Two to three minutes is a long time to just observe something. You might feel like this is a ridiculous exercise, but try spotting those different things that I mentioned. It'll help you far more than you think when you actually try to draw it later. Now, when you start drawing, place your photo reference not too far from your canvas, maybe inches away from where you'll be drawing and try your best to copy what you see. It's always good to use guidelines to help with proportions and placement. Start by drawing a light sketch of the basic shapes that make up the subject in your reference until it starts to resemble it a bit. Don't expect anything to look incredible. It's meant to be sketchy. Once you have something that you feel looks kind of like the reference, then you can draw over it with more confident lines on a different layer, maybe. And don't worry about perfection. It's important to remember that you're still learning. It's okay if your drawing don't turn out perfectly. Actually, most of them will probably suck. But as long as you feel like things are getting more accurate and slightly easier the more you do them over weeks, then you're on the right path. You might even surprise yourself here and there. When you can consistently draw convincing copies of your simple references, you're ready for the next level. And before I move on to the intermediate level, if you want to learn exactly how to do all of this stuff and more, explained in much more detail and structured like a real art school program, you should take advantage of the huge New Year sale that I'm having on my art program. It'll be valid until the end of this month only. We have an awesome community in our private Discord and the program just reached 14,000 students, which is more than I could have ever imagined. Check it out with the link in the video description. You won't regret it. Hopefully. All right, moving on to intermediate artists. If you have something like a year or more of practice, you probably fit the requirement here. Just like an RPG game where you want to keep fighting stronger and stronger enemies to get more XP and, you know, keep leveling up, it's important to adapt the way you practice as you improve or you'll just end up plateauing and wasting your time. At this point, you'll want to practice with a variety of reference materials, no longer limited to simple volumes or basic poses while practicing gesture drawing. Start experimenting with perspective. Try drawing your subjects from different angles and poses to challenge yourself and improve your skills. As you become more comfortable, you can also try working with different types of references, like video stills and live models, in addition to photos. Using references that are further away from your canvas will also help push the challenge. For beginners, I recommended that you have the reference right next to your drawing area. But now for intermediate artists, try having the reference on a different screen, maybe further away. For the biggest challenge, try with live models when doing gesture drawing or just drawing anything from life really just by looking at your surroundings at this level you can also start to pay attention to more than just the lines and the proportions start observing the details and the anatomy maybe the values and the shadows and the highlights 
and pay attention to where the light sources are. You can start to copy the shading from your references to give form to your drawings. At this level, a fantastic practice that I often recommend to my students is to start mixing two or more references to create a single drawing. And that's hard, but you need to keep pushing to keep improving. Now, finally, the last level for more experienced artists. That might be you if you've been drawing consistently for like two or more years. At this point in your art journey, you'll want to use references as a starting point, not an end result. As an experienced artist, you should aim to use reference materials as a way to inspire your own artistic vision rather than just copying them exactly. That's really the main distinction here. You're not training to be a copy machine after all. Experiment with different techniques and styles to create unique and original artwork. If you're working on a character pose, for example, you might already be familiar with body proportions and anatomy, so the challenge this time might be to use the pose only while keeping your original character's proportions and style. Continuously challenge yourself. You gotta keep raising the difficulty level to keep making good XP. Try working with new subjects, materials, and techniques to keep yourself challenged and inspired. When drawing people, find references with foreshortening and practice combining multiple costume references to inspire your designs just like pros do when we design new characters, props, or environments for games or films. If anything, that's really the main difference. With more experience, you learn to use more references. At the start of your journey, the reference was the target. Now, your experience allows you to create the target on your own and use the references as helping hands to get there. And I almost forgot, you should do this at every level, but Seek feedback and critique. Join a community like what my students have for the art school program and make sure that you're not always in your little art bubble. As you work on your art, ask other artists and professionals, hopefully, to help you identify areas of improvements and learn new techniques. That obviously becomes harder as you get better, but it's important to keep that humility and always seek feedback. There's always more to learn. That's what makes art so fun. I might have been drawing for 30 years now, but I'm still learning so much all the time. But that continuous growth is only possible if you adjust how you learn over time. Follow the rough guidelines from this video and you too should make solid progress for years to come. And that's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. Let me know if that was helpful in the comments. As usual, I read them all. This class is important to keep in mind, especially if you're taking part in the Learn to Draw in One Year challenge that I went over in last week's class, since it contains a lot of drawing from reference exercises. Check it out if you haven't, by the way. Link in the video description, along with a link to one of my two custom brush sets that you can download for absolutely free if you haven't already. These are some of my favorite brushes that I use all the time. Give them a go. There's a reason over 350,000 people have downloaded them so far. Have fun and see you next week.